Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday night service. Everybody stand for prayer. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Father, I thank you. I thank you tonight, Father, for each and every shiny face here, Father. I like to I thank you that I'm able to look out here and see the image of you, Father, on all these faces, Lord. I pray, Father, that you will open up our hearts and our minds and our ears, Father. I pray that you will open up the ears and the eyes of our hearts, Father, so we can hear what your word says today, Father, so we can see you, Lord. I pray, Father, that that you just help the speaker tonight, Father, that you will help the you will help Steve Lord tonight, Father, to deliver the message that you use him as a willing vessel, Father, to bring forth your message, Father. And I pray that it falls on anointed ears, Lord. I pray that you not only anoint the preacher, but you anoint the, the listeners, Father, and that it brings conviction, Lord, and that there will be salvations. I pray, Lord, over each and every man, woman, and child in this room today that you keep your hand of, prep, of blessing and protection upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Prepare your hearts for worship. Amen. Lord, hallelujah. The worthy. Praise the Lord. We're excited. You know why? It's the first time we're here together up in this, in this platform, us three. We waited years to do this, and today's our, our present. We can't look back. And then, you know, awesome face, God. You guys can do it too. Amen. Should do it. We give God the glory. We give God the glory for that. Amen. That we learn from these men of God how, how excited they are when they're up here. And God uses them. You know, that's how our, our desire and our dreams. So we want to just share that with you guys. And, and wish us the best. So give us the best praise you got. Give God the best praise you got tonight. Let's sing unto the Lord. Let's give God his glory, which is he's worthy of. Let's make God glad and the devil mad. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go to page 85 today. I forgot who we're making mad again. We stand with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It hasn't lost the battle yet. Hallelujah. We want to stand up and sing this up. Let's sing this to God the glory.
Can't make it without you, my king. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I lost my way. Four, let's go to 468. Hallelujah. Love you, my Lord. It's all about Jesus today. Any prayer requests? Yes, Larry. Amen. I'm going to pray for the word tonight. Any other prayer requests?
Amen. Yes. Brother Greg, my request is that we as Christians can uh, do life of your own to know your body of Christ. And Amen. We love each other. We all make up one body. One yes. Time. Thank you, brother. That's how you give a testimony. That's it. Yes, Terry. Yes. I want to thank God for letting me stand up in society to stand up and be the strength of my soul. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Keep standing. Amen. Amen. Any more prayer requests? Let's do. You can feel that wickedness out in the world, and when you come back in, you can feel that love of Christ in here. Amen. Yes. Unspoken. Unspoken. Yes, brother. Uh, I want to thank God for being here for the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Mm -hmm. All y'all, y'all men and women of God. I haven't been around so many men and women of God since I was first grade. Hallelujah. Pray from Jesus. Jesus to all glory. Amen. Amen. Mr. Black. Unspoken. Larry, there's your second one. Okay. Uh, for all the residents that left and are out in the world. Yes, for definitely. All uns uh, unsafe loved ones. Amen. 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 Definitely. Good. Yes. I'm asking for God to grant a motion for recusal regarding the court proceeding and a corrupt judge, but I read the motion prepared by my defense attorney, and it was really powerful, lawful argument. This affects my life in a huge way, so I'm asking that the court would go ahead and take her off the case. So, thank you. Amen. Yes. Everybody's in prison, yeah, to be safe. Any more? You know, uh, one, another way we can get a, a lot of our prayers answered is to show up Tuesday night mm -hmm. for prayer meeting. Amen. A lot of prayers are getting answered. And if you don't show up, you're missing out on a lot. Don't leave this place without f getting God's blessing. You know, even if not for yourself, pray for somebody else. That's another way to get blessed, praying for someone else. It's not always about us, you know. If, if people who put this mission together, only thought about themselves, we wouldn't have a place to stay right now. Amen. We want to worry, we want to pray about other people. Let's show up on Tuesday. There's power in prayer. As my man was just saying earlier, that uh, we all make up one body. And now if one person is missing, that's a piece of the body. It's not as strong. We need everyone to be unified. We, we don't want a place not like this to be as strong as it could or effect, as effective as it should be. Because when you get blessed, other people need to get blessed, too. All right, everybody stand for prayer, please. Brother Doug, would you pray for us, please?
Amen. May I get the ushers, please? Gracious Father, we bless thee. We thank thee this evening, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us, Lord. Yes. Lord. We ask now, Lord, that you bless the gift, bless the gift giver, Lord. We ask now that you will multiply this offering yes, for eternal Father. purposes, Lord. And for all you do, blessed Father, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' masterful name. Amen. Amen. Offering goes to Guatemala. Uh, I want to thank you for your giving. It goes a long way. It's being used to open up other churches to help other people just like us. So you're really blessing God. You're blessing yourselves and you're blessing others. Amen. Prepare your hearts for the next worship song. Amen. Let's stand for this last song, please. Give God the glory. Get ready for the word. 625. Come, sir. Thank you. 625.
preaching already. I can feel the presence of God is in here. Don't miss it. Don't miss what God's doing right now. He wants to change all of our lives. He wants to get in, in our lives and not only change us, but change everything around us. Amen. Don't miss it while you're here. Don't miss it. Now prepare your hearts for the word. Go to Steve. May the Lord be with you. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, right? I was, uh, I was handing it off, man. You want my notes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's started out real good here. How's everybody tonight? I uh, hope everybody's hope everybody's doing good. Um, I hope we're all ready for this one. Well, I was. I, I tell you, the last time I was up here, I, I brought this up, and then I after I. I was saying it, I'm like, you know what, you, you talk about that a lot. You might as well talk about it one Wednesday night. So I did. I decided right then. I even wrote on my little notes to that's what I was going to do tonight. And then when I started preparing for it and studying for it, uh, I think I bit off more than I could chew or felt like I did because I, was, I just really got into it. And uh, before I realized it, I had the, the scripture that I was going to read tonight start us all off with, and I was really excited about it and was, couldn't wait to read it and, and get into it, and that's not even what I'm going to read tonight. <laughs> uh, but no, I didn't change the message. I just changed the verse uh, because I got, I got into it. And, uh, and you know, sometimes I, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing by going through all of this and telling you guys, but I really feel like it's, it's important to understand how I go through the process sometimes and uh, for me and, and how I learned it and, and how, how excited I am about it. Uh, God gets me excited about it. And I changed the message one time because I felt like, I mean, right, right in the middle of uh, like an hour before I was to give the message, I totally changed it because I thought, God had changed it, for, wanted me to change it. And Reverend Ledger told me that I better be careful because sometimes that may not be God doing that. And uh, so I, I'm not really worried about this one because it's the same message. It's just a little bit different scripture. And uh, there's, more, there's more to it than I even thought there was. So um, I'm, I'm, it's on Ephesians verse or chapter 6, you don't have to stand because it's just it's a real short one. And then I'm going to get into uh, some of the other scripture that I started out with. But if you want to follow along in your Bible real quick, it's from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, especially principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And um, that, that says a whole lot. It says a whole lot. Dear Lord, thank you for this, this scripture that you've given me tonight, and thank you for the message. Uh, I ask you to help me with it and, and give me the words that you want me to say and just like you did, uh, Balaam. And that's, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I, I love you and thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow my notes a little bit so I don't get off track because it's, it's a really interesting story. Uh, but when the people of Israel left Egypt, when, when they finally, God helped them out and, and let them out. <laughs> And that's the best way to put it. He let them out. They'd been there for a long time, and they'd been praying for a long time. And, and God let them go. Um, he buried the Egyptian army there in the Red Sea behind them, uh, the ones, the army that was chasing after them. And they wandered around for a long time. You guys know the story. And except for the Canaanites, they, every single every single enemy that they faced they conquered and and they won because they had God on their side um, 
they get, they wound up after 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 uh, wandering around. They wound up in the plains of Moab, and right on the edge of right on the edge of the mountains. And um, Balaam, Balaam was. It took me a while to to figure out exactly what Balaam was. Balaam started out as a as a prophet, and he knew God really well. But he's like a lot of other people. He he. He got into uh, he got into the to the other side of things. He uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was once a prophet, but yeah, he was more of a uh, it was more of a business to him than it was religion. And uh, he was he was a real greedy man. But when when Balak the, the king of Moab uh, found out that all these Israelites were out there, uh, he got scared, he got worried. And um, I want to, in, and I'm sorry, I should have, when Balak, king of Moab, saw the magnitude of the Israel, Israelites, yeah, number, Numbers 22, five, he sent messengers therefore unto Balaam, the son, of Beor to Pether, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. There was a whole bunch of them that cover the face of the earth. That was the point that I was trying to make. Um, and he didn't know what to do. He was, he was freaking out and he was scared because there was just too many of them and he knew he couldn't fight them all. He knew he couldn't, he couldn't beat them with just the conventional ways of war. So he, he knew Balaam was up, up there in the mountains and he knew that Balaam had, had, could speak to the devil and he knew that he used sorcery and he used he he did everything that he could just just for 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 the money basically um but in those days people believed that each nation had their own god and balaam knew that jehovah was the god of israelites and moab or, or i'm sorry balak what balak wanted to do was ask balaam to come down to Moab and and curse curse put a curse on the Israelites so he could so he could beat them and Balaam knew that he knew God he knew him and he knew that he was the God of Israel and he knew that they'd been blessed and uh, he knew better than to do that but. Uh, that's why he was, he was going to seek God and find out what his will was on the situation. But God wound up coming to him. Uh, Balaam, or Balak, sent some messengers to, to get Balaam and, uh, and to offer him some money to come and do this for him. And, and Balaam, Balaam wouldn't do it. Uh, he, he knew better. And he should have re he should have resisted harder in in the very beginning, but he didn't. Um, okay, and in verse twelve, I'm sorry, I'm going to verse uh, I'm going to Numbers <coughs> chapter twenty two, and in verse twelve, God told him not to go, and made it very clear in verse twelve. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And that was part of the covenant with, with Abraham and God back, way back in Genesis. Genesis, after, actually chapter, chapter 12, verses 1, uh, chapter 1, 1, 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred, and from the Father's house unto a land that I will show thee. All right. So let me get back on track here and let you know that when I, I used to tell you guys all the time about the donkey, 
That's what started all this, the donkey. How can, how can someone not believe in the Bible, and, or how can they believe in God but not believe certain parts of it? You know, you, you've heard me bring that up and say, Amen. you know, he, he believed in part of, he, he believed in God and he believed in part of the Bible, but I just can't believe the part about the donkey. So I'd never really, I, I'd never really gotten into the story. So, but I knew a little bit about it, and I knew that, and, and I had this conversation with my dad today, that if, if the whole, if God, the creator of this whole universe and everything in it could create all of this, then surely he could create a donkey and, and make him talk. Uh, but why, why did the talk, donkey talk? The donkey talked. The donkey talked. Why did the donkey talk? <laughs> See, I've, I've gotten I've gotten so much here in my in my notes that I've even lost myself, and I and I apologize for that. But the part of that conversation that I had with my dad, because my dad put me on the defense about it, and you know he he said that, well, I believe that that God talks to us all, and. Just because that they, it said that it talked to a donkey talk doesn't necessarily mean that the donkey did talk. Well, I believe that the donkey did talk because uh, I believe that the Bible said the donkey talked. And I believe that God will use whatever he has to to, to get the word to us. I believe, I know, I know my dog, and, and I don't mean this, this to be funny, but it, it kind of is, I know my dog talked to me one night in my apartment, and God talked to me through my dog, and I didn't hear the, the dog's voice, I don't think. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you right now, I don't remember the dog talking. He could have, I don't know. But he, he used that dog to talk to me, and I didn't hear his voice, but there was no doubt when, when I got up the next morning, I knew that, that God had, had spoke to me through that dog, and I, I've told you all that before. But in this case, I, I believe that, that he did use the donkey to talk, and I believe that, the, that his voice, he, he talked in such a, a proper manner that it didn't surprise Balaam. Balaam Balaam didn't act surprised at all. And let me just go ahead and, and read. Uh, that's what I w was going to start out with anyway. On verses 20, 20 through, uh, I don't know, it's 20 through 34. But uh, Balaam knew God too well to think that he could reverse any of his thoughts. And when, when these guys came and asked him, ask him to go and, and put this curse on him, he didn't, he didn't do it. And uh, God came to him. They went back and told Balak. They, they said he, he won't come. He's freaked out. And Balak, Balak sent them back and said, you know, offer him this and offer him honor and offer him a bunch of money. Give him whatever he wants. Make him come. He's got to do this. And Balaam when they came back and they offered him that, Balaam said, uh, you know, I, I just, I can't do it. I, I, I know he knew, he knew God, he knew him well, and he knew not to do it. But in his mind, uh, he, he's trying to figure out a way to get around God so he could do it because he wanted to do it. And that's, you know, that's, that's what this whole message was about, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> But Balaam, uh, he respected him too much to attempt to do anything without God's permission, even though he was covetous. He didn't dare go against the command of God. Many make all these same professions as Balaam without justifying them by their conduct. They say they would not do anything against the word of God, even for a house full of gold, and yet they do it for a handful of gold. And that's me. That's me. For for so many years, I I could I could say the same thing. No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I can remember telling my making jokes 
to my brother and to my aunt and to anybody that listened, man, I, you know, that pride talking again. Before, I'd just soon wind up living up or, uh, under a bridge as to do that. Well, here I am. You know, I didn't, I didn't wind up under a bridge, but that was only because God didn't want me to live under the bridge. He brought me here. Amen. But the, the point, you understand the point. I'd say I, I wouldn't do it for any amount of money. I wouldn't do this, but I wound up doing it anyway for just a little bit. I ain't, I ain't going to drink anymore. Oh, I'm just not going to drink anymore. I'm done drinking. I'm done drinking until tomorrow. And then I drank again. But uh, God came to Balaam that night when, when they said, he, he told them no, he wasn't going to do it for any amount of money. Then that was at night, so they left his camp or his tent or whatever. And they were going to leave, probably leave the next morning. But, but God came to Balaam that night, and uh, he, told, he, he told Balaam since, um, and God came unto Balaam in verse 20, God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee that thou shalt do. He, he said, and this, was, this is something that, that I just found really interesting because I, I, I know I've told you guys before that sometimes I use a different version of the Bible to help me understand it. And at this point, I was, I was looking at the, the NIV, which is the New International Version, um, because it, it's really easier to understand. And, and I go back and forth, but I read this part in the NIV, that very same verse, and this is, this is how just a little bit, one word, can make a huge difference. The NIV said in verse 20, That night God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Now the King James Version and Three of the other two versions that I use that, I, that are a lot like the King James Version. The King James Version said, And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call on thee. He said, If. Now, I, I was having a hard time with, with the other version that said that, that, that these men, since these men have come to you. Like, well... That's telling me that God's telling me it's okay there, but it doesn't sound, reading it, it doesn't sound like it, it is okay with him. But then when I got the King James Version out, it says, if the men come. So if the men, God was testing him right there, and I didn't know it. If the men come, because he wanted him to wait. He wanted him to wait until the morning. And you find out in the next in the next verse, Balaam got up the next morning and saddled his donkey and went with his went with the messengers. So he got up and he, he couldn't wait. He he he'd already made up in his mind, and and that's the thing. That's that's God's message here, and I, and I, this is where I need help with. This is where I need God's help with me, because we. Or, and I'm going to use me so I don't uh, offend anybody else. I want to do something, and I want to figure out a way to get it done, and I'll justify it however I can. Yep. And, and I do that with sin. I've done that with sin. You know, how many Christians, and I'm not going to raise my hand, I'm not going to say yes or no with me, but how many Christians... Don't sin because they know it's, it's God's word and he says don't do it and they know the consequences of it, but they really want to do it and they wish it wasn't against his will. How many, how many do that? How many, how many, who would go out, and I'm not asking you guys this, but, you know, Christian-wise, who would go out and drink? They don't drink, but they would go out and drink if it wasn't a sin and they knew that, that it that God would be upset with them. They want to go out and drink, but they won't because it's a sin. Um, yeah, it's 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 an interesting. It, well, it's not interesting. It, it it's 
I want to be that person that I don't want to do anything. None of you, I don't think, any of you would just go out and murder somebody. Uh, there, that's, that's a sin, but that's not something that most people would go out and do. Uh, but the, it's also a sin to have sex if you're not married. Uh, but I've done that. How many, how many, how many times would you, how many, it's a sin to have sex with somebody if you're married, to have sex with somebody else that's not married, or that, that is married, even if you're married or not. Um, that's adultery. How many times would you, how many would, who would do that if it wasn't against if it wasn't against God's law, um, that's when that's when you really when I really find out in my heart who I am on some of the things that I would do or wouldn't do if if it was okay with God if I if I did them. Um, that's that's when it really hits home that God knows my heart better than I know my heart. Because God knows, God knows if I would do it. There's something, well, I don't know if I would do certain things. There's certain things that I'm not sure that I would do. Or, I don't know. I just don't know because I had, you know, I've always said that it, it, I don't have children, but I think the worst thing in the whole world, and I've told you all of this before, and I've talked to other people about it, the worst thing in the whole world for me is if I had a, a child, a female, a daughter, and somebody raped her. Um, God tells me I'm to forgive him. Uh, that would be the hardest thing, I, you know, and I'm sitting right here telling, that's the kind of thing that I'm telling you, I don't know if I could forgive him or not. I don't know if I could do that. Uh, I know I'm supposed to, but I don't know if I could. Um, I'd like to know, God knows if I could or not. God knows right now if I could or not, and that that's scary, you know, uh, Mark Twain, one of his famous quotes, I like to look at stuff like that all the time, and one of his, his quotes, famous quotes, was uh, somebody asked him, if, uh, aren't you worried about, he, he was talking about the Bible and understanding the Bible, and it's hard to understand, he said, aren't, aren't you, doesn't it scare you what you don't know about the Bible? He said, no, what scares me about the Bible is what I do know. <laughs> and and that's, that should scare everybody. If you believe the Bible and you believe in God, uh, what you know about the Bible is what should scare you. And it, it scares me that God knows my heart better than I do. And I, I don't want to, I want to be able to forgive that, that man that rapes my daughter. I want to do that. But I don't know if I could. Uh, but anyway, the... Uh, Balaam got up the next morning, and he saddled his donkey, and he went with the, the messengers. And the problem here starts in verse 12, when God said, Don't go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. This was, this was the first time. And then here the second time, God tells him that if they come to you in the morning, go with them, but do only what I tell you. So he's telling him right there, wait wait until in, in the morning when they come to get you, do exactly like I say do, and he didn't. He runs off, and, and he gets on the donkey, and that's, you know, that's, we're getting there at the donkey, finally. Aren't you, are any, is anybody tired now? They're sorry that it, that it, it took me, I took the long way to get to that. <laughs> I apologize for it, but uh, if you only knew how nervous I am right now, you'd forgive me. <laughs> um, but he didn't wait for God to tell him anything. He just got up and went. He didn't wait because he wanted to go for the sake of the honors and the rewards. He went to them instead of saying, staying till they should come to him. He went out of his own head and did exactly what he wanted to do. Um, God was very angry. In, in verse 22, God was angry when, when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road 
into a field. Balaam beat it to get back on the road. And the, da- the donkey saw the angel. The donkey saw the angel. Daniel, and Daniel 10, 7 says, And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so they fled to hide themselves. That, that's telling me that, that anybody that's interested, anybody that's, that's paying attention, Anybody that, even the donkey, the donkey animals are so innocent anyway. The donkey's not, not full of sin. The donkey's not full of hatred. The donkey's not so many different things that the donkey saw the angel. God opened the donkey's eyes, and the, and the donkey saw the angel. Um, just like the dog opened his eyes, and he could see me. And I've told you all that before, too. I used to look at my dog and say, I, I, wish, I, could, I wish I knew what you were thinking. And other times I said, I'm glad I don't. Um, but, but I believe that God uses animals, and he uses dogs, or he'll use a cat, or he'll use a donkey. Um, but in, in 24, the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with the walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. He beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on and stood in a narrow place where there were no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel, the Lord, it lay down under Balaam. And when he was angry and he beat it with his staff, then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You have made made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. Yeah, he would kill him right then. The donkey... uh, uh, As I said, Balaam didn't seem surprised that the donkey spoke. And, and it, like I said, it tells me that Balaam knew, Balaam knew had God had something to do with it. Or a, a commentator brought up the fact that, or maybe Satan had used animals to speak to Balaam in the past, like he used a serpent to deceive Eve. God spoke to, God spoke to me. Verse 30, the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey? which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you, because your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now. But I would have spared it, and he would have spared the donkey. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now, if you are displeased, I will go back. Uh, that the lesson right there is, is Balaam realized that he had sinned, and and he admitted to the to the angel of the Lord that he had sinned, and he said, "If you want me to go back, I'll go back." Um, that's really important when you sin, to admit that you've sinned, realize that you've sinned. And acknowledge it to God that you have sinned and, and ask for his forgiveness. And, and that's what Balaam did. Uh, Balaam had done a lot of bad things, and, and Balaam, Balaam's going to do some more bad things. Uh, but he, he realized right then that he had sinned, and, uh, and, he, and he admitted it. God opened Balaam's eyes so he could see the angel with a sword, 
and he fell on his face. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with, the, went with Balak's officials. Uh, God, God allowed Balaam to continue on his journey, but told him to speak only what he told him to speak. And that's what he, that's what he should have done in the first place, is listen to it. Uh, I think Balaam realized that, that at this point, Balaam realized there was a whole lot more going on with just, just some, some money. And uh, uh, it, was more about, it was more about other things than just curse, cursing the nation. And, and about money, he he and he finds out a little bit later, uh, in this in this chapter or in this in book of Numbers, uh, that that this had this all had to do with the God's promise, uh, the God's promise to Abraham and uh, the promise of Jesus, and that's just a whole another that's a whole another message. I I, I it's. It's amazing to me how much, I, I say this every time I get up here, it's amazing how much there's in all of this. This, this right here is basically about uh, 10 or 12, maybe 13 verses, and it's just so involved. It, it's so involved. I, I spent a lot of time on it, but I still didn't know it as well as I thought I did because there's just so much there. Um, but there's the lesson... I think the lesson here for me, the, the biggest lesson is, is when I know wh that, that God's telling me to do something or not to do something, I, there's been times that I've known, but I, 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 like to, I like to try to fool God, just like Balaam did. I like to fool him and, and try to fool him and let convincing myself that I know better right. and and I well you know he'll be okay with this it, you know he didn't really mean that or you know I'll go ahead and do it and, and he'll forgive me for it um, and and that's what this I guess that's the message in here for me is is when I like to tell I've, I've told Reverend Wooten a long time ago and, I, and I've told other people too that I just wish that, that God would tell me if it was him. I don't know if it's him telling me or if it's me telling me or if it's the devil telling me. I'm just not sure. But I'm finding out now that I, am, I have been sure all the time. I was sure, but I was saying that I wasn't sure and I, it, it, trying to justify it in my mind because that's what I wanted to do. Just like Balaam, Balaam wanted to go and, and put the curse and do whatever Balak wanted him to do because he was seeing all the money and, and all the honor and, and all, the, all the good stuff. He was seeing all the material things. So he was going to figure out a way to do it, just like I've done so many times, trying to figure out a way to have my way and get my way doing and saying whatever I could and just getting up to crossing that line. Well, I've really already crossed it. I've really already done in my mind what God told me not to do. And then, then instead of being like Balaam, instead of realizing that what I've done and, and messed up, it's like, okay, okay. You got instead of doing that, I tried to go around that too. And that that'll that'll lead you right into that'll get you to a rescue mission. That's where that'll take you. That'll put you under a bridge and lead you right straight to a rescue mission. And he, whether you believe it or not, uh, that's what happens. And it, it happened to me. Um, Balaam Balaam learned in 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 this this time he learned. And uh, God let him go on because God, God wasn't finished with him. God's not finished with me. God's not finished with any of you either. Um, you know, you can, you can go ahead and, and say, I, forgive me, Lord, I've sinned. Uh, help me out here. Help me. 
show me what you want me to do. Because uh, I, you know, I've already did what I wanted to do. I partied till I was homeless. <laughs> you know, help me out here. Show me what you want me to do. And, and yeah, that, that, is, that is a good point. That came straight from God. It didn't me because I, I, left, I left me a little while ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was, uh, it's, the, whole, the whole chapter is, you know, it's 36 verses long. It's, it's really an interesting story, and, and you ought to read it. And, and then, then go ahead and read the rest of Numbers. This is chapter 22. I forget how many. I think there's only 25 chapters in it. And then read some more what, what happened when he, he, he wound up going with Balak. With his, uh, as, as you know, he, he wound up going and uh, talking, to the, talking to the Israelites and, and doing exactly what God told him not to do. After God told him to do what I told you to tell you to do and only do what I tell you to do, then he kind of didn't. So anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, and going back to Ephesians 6, 12, what I, what I started off with, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, against principalities, and that's, that's yeah, we battle those. We don't, not the flesh and blood. You know, I, I'm going to use Greg because I know he won't, he, he won't take it the wrong way, but Greg can do or say anything he wants to me. He can treat me however he wants to and, and whatever, but... He's not, he's not what I got to worry about. He can't, he can't hurt me in any way. So, and it's not as long as I got God. And uh, God, I, I, you know, Romans, yeah. Well, it's, it's, I've got it written down here somewhere, but, you know, without God, who is against us? If, if, if God is for us, who is against us? Romans, it's in Romans. And, and yeah, 8.13, I got it. I promise I got it somewhere. I, somewhere. Um, but who is, if he's for us, who is against us? And, and that's what Israel, Israel had a promise from him. And it didn't matter if, it didn't matter if Balaam or Balak or Baal, the, the, the idol that he worshipped, it don't matter who was against Israel. Uh, God had blessed them, so they were, they were going to be fine. They were going to be fine. So, that, you know, we're Israel. We're all blessed. God bless us. God bless us with Jesus. And, and uh, there's, there's nothing, but we got to, you know, we got to be a part of that too. You can't just... We just can't lay around and, and drink and smoke and cuss and do whatever we want to and expect everything to be all right. We have to we have to put forth that a little bit of that effort. So anyway, thank you for listening to me. I hope everybody has a, a good day tomorrow. I uh, hope you have a good night tonight. Go go to your dorm, go to the bunk and say a little prayer for somebody. Somebody. Say it for me if you can't think of anybody else. I'm, I want to say one for, for you. Let's stand for prayer. Brother McFarland, will you dismiss us, please?